Cape Cod has a dirty little drug secret, and it's a story that law enforcement officials are hearing over and over. People from Cape Cod are making the trek down to Florida to buy legal prescription drugs like Oxycontin and Percocet, which eventually make it back to our streets. We headed down to the Sunshine State last month to follow the drugs that are coming from these so-called pill mills. Police say there are 900 of these establishments, which are legal medical clinics that dispense the painkilling drugs to people willing to pay cash. Police allege that doctors involved in these clinics are simply legalized drug dealers with medical degrees. They overprescribe the drugs with little oversight, which fuels the habit of drug users and lines the pockets of drug dealers from all over the East Coast. We sat down with authorities in Palm Beach and Fort Lauderdale to discuss what the problem looks like from their end. I'm Captain Carl Durr with the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. I'm in charge of our narcotics division and also the commander of the multi-agency diversion task force for Palm Beach County. Uh, when I first took command of this division about five and a half, six years ago, you know, we were focusing on cocaine and marijuana, uh, which was most of our investigations. Now, I'd say probably 80% of our investigation time is into the diversion of, of, of pharmaceutical pills. One of the most significant busts that we've been taking part in is, is is closing down three pain clinics, but then also, you know, going beyond the pain clinics is uh, the arrest of, of multiple doctors because, you know, whether it's a pain clinic or a doctor that's illegally prescribing these, it's it, it's killing people here, not only in Palm Beach County, but we don't even have the measurement of what how many pills are how many how many deaths are being created by our, our pills that originate from here. So and I think that's the biggest travesty in the situation. You know, we talk about addiction, that's terrible. But when we talk about the deaths uh, that are going un unneeded, uh, that's, wh that's what the biggest problem is. A Palm Beach County narcotics officer took us on a tour of several pain management clinics within a few miles of each other in downtown Palm Beach. In the rear parking lot of one called Palm Beach Wellness and Rejuvenation, we saw a group of young men gathered around a small blue car with Kentucky plates. As the unmarked police car entered the parking lot, the young men quickly went back to their own car and drove away. Sergeant Larry Poston approached the Kentucky couple to ask them a few questions. They tell you, what, did, what did the people tell you? Just that he could get treated for his pain, that they would, you know, give him pain medication and right. blah, blah, blah. That is our typical uh, pain management customer. Yeah. Um, they've come from Kentucky, they've driven all night or they've driven uh, you know all day. They're staying in some hotel along the beach because they usually will visit the beach and then they're here just to go to the pain clinics. So, not, not surprising at all. When I first got out of the car and asked them, hey what are you guys doing? They gave me two different answers. Um, she said, oh he's just using the bathroom and he said, oh I'm here to see the doctor. Well they obviously were, you know, caught then so yeah. they kind of then they backtracked and she kind of came clean and said no you know we're here to see the doctor and, and then they went into the story about how they can't get treated mm -hmm. in Kentucky um, my guess is that they can be treated in Kentucky mm -hmm. or any of the other states that they drove through mm -hmm. it's they cannot be treated in the manner or fashion that they want to be treated which is simply they just want the pills um, you know whether or not he needs those pills or not would be something that would be interesting to find mm -hmm. out most pain clinics have armed security guards because the clinics deal in large amounts of cash and because the so-called patients congregate in large groups and can sometimes be unruly. Here the security guard is stationed in the parking lot of another Palm Beach clinic. As the unmarked police car drives through the lot, the security guard takes down our license plate number. We didn't need a police officer to find the clinics. Their large, colorful advertisements are easily found in the last six pages of an alternative newspaper that is dispensed free in street corners like this one on Fort Lauderdale's main strip. This is the News Times, where everyone tells us we can find pages and pages of advertisement for pain management clinics. Here we have Stop the Pain, $100 off your first visit. Um, so we're going to try to go into one of these clinics today and see if we can get any of the medication. We just went to this place, um, said grand opening, no Florida ID required. And sure enough, out in the parking lot there were uh, plates from Ohio and Kentucky and West Virginia, I think. There were three or four different states and 
in the waiting room there were a lot of people a lot of young people in their late teens early 20s and when I went up and asked if I could get some treatment they told me um, yes I'd need an MRI they could refer me to a place to get an MRI and I could only go to that place nowhere else and then I would come back and the doctor would look at me and it's two hundred and fifty dollars cash or credit no insurance for my first visit and then they would assess what I needed and they said they have a variety of different um, what do they call it medications for pain management so then I walked around to the side of the building where there was a little courtyard with picnic tables and there are a bunch of people one of them looked really out of it his eyes kept rolling into the back of his head and they were just waiting around smoking cigarettes. One said he was from Kentucky, another said he was from North Carolina, and then a bunch of them seemed to get into a couple of different vans, one with Ohio plates, one I believe with Kentucky plates, and some other people walked out of the building holding prescription bags, and they got into the, into the big vans and drove away. And just about at that point, we had to leave ourselves because some kind of scary looking security guard came out and was staring at us. Most doctors, unless they are specialists in uh, pain management, and a legitimate pain management mm -hmm. specialist, uh, most uh, other physicians uh, don't dispense from their office Schedule II medications. Okay. Even though pill mills do exist in other states, none to the level that they do here. Uh, exactly. In mm -hmm. terms of particularly of, of the the volume, High volume. Yeah. and that's another reason that people would seek to come here is because they can not doctor shop mm -hmm. but they can pill mill shop pill mill shop right. okay you know because they can go to three or four clinics in a day mm -hmm. uh, and if they have six people in the van mm -hmm. and it's all cash business you know boom 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 there's a lot of cash going out yeah. but there's a valuable illicit product you know coming back in yeah. the easy accessibility of highly addictive drugs have had a disastrous effect on Florida residents. Overdose deaths from oxycodone, the main ingredient in many pain pills, rose 249% in Florida from 2005 to 2009, according to the state medical examiner. In Broward County, which has the most pill mills, oxycodone overdose deaths rose 258% in the same time period. Overdoses in Broward County for those 21 to 29 years of age are nearly double those for the nation. It's a horrible web of destruction, as Maureen Barrett and her son Todd know all too well. My wife Stephanie, she died at age 26, um, November 22, 2008. And this is my brother, Drew, and he died April 1, 2002. And um, I found them both dead um, from both drug overdoses. We lost Drew in 2002, and it was at the hands of a doctor who had prescribed him 1,455 pills in less than 57 days for no medical reason. And I just felt that um, I was not ashamed of the disease of addiction and that I needed to get out and let the public know what was happening in our community with these doctors and the pill mills. And it's a way of keeping my son's memory alive and hopefully preventing other young people from becoming addicted to these pain pills and dying. And then Stephanie, um, she came into our family in 2004, and she had had a rough childhood, and she walked into a beautiful family who loved her and her two children. And her loss of life um, hit me really even harder than my son because I thought we had her on the road to recovery. And she also gave us a beautiful granddaughter who they named Drew, and she is just the love of our lives.